Commander unites both the players and the investors for Magic the Gathering. Let's talk about why this is so important. Well, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. My name's Louie. Today we're gonna to be talking about Commander. We're gonna take a look at a specific interaction that just happened with the new Capenna uh, release and uh, spoiler season that really caused a lot of impact in both the player side and collectible investable side of Magic the Gathering, particularly as it pertains to Commander. I thought this was a really cool interaction. The other day I was actually thinking to myself, why is it that I love Commander so much? much like what well, I think I was having a conversation with Josh or something from hometown TCG and I was just like why is it that I gravitate towards commander and I think the, the reason is is it hits both of the things that I love so much uh, right on the head it, it is a, com a format that is so much fun to play casually at the kitchen table I have a play group. We get together probably three weeks a month. Uh, we play Commander for four or five hours late into the night. It's a good time. It's a lot of fun casually. I don't play like, you know, competitive EDH or anything like that. I just play casually with my friends and that is a blast. And it's a great way to experience a game around the kitchen table. But then the other side of Commander is that you can use all these cards and that it goes in the big robust history of Magic the Gathering. And this causes things like what we're about to to talk about to happen and spikes to happen in the market which i love as a collector and investor i love trying to figure it out and i love trying to speculate on it and it's a lot of fun to hop into that world too and when those worlds collide you get commander i think this is a great interaction so today we're going to look at um, a card that was just spoiled of new capenna this is the uh the card was is called the beam town bullies and the, the image that you're going to see is kind of blurry this is the only image that's available but here's what it says uh, it's got Vigilance and Haste. This is a, uh, a creature, legendary creature, of course. Target opponent whose turn it is, uh, put target non-legendary creature from your graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gains haste. Goad it. At the beginning of the next end step, exile it. Uh, so goad is, you know, forces the other people to attack. Um, but this is something that just completely set off a particular Rise of the Eldrazi card called uh, Hellcarver Demon. And Hellcarver Carver Demon was always a $1 card. It was always super cheap. The, from the very first moment it was printed, all the way for the last, whatever it is, 10 years, it has always been a $1 card. But this new commander from New Capenna has shot that price of that card up to around $20 on TCG Player for like a near mint copy. I think moderate play at the time of this recording is like 16 bucks. But, um, so the, it's really cool because Hellcarver Demon is itself is not a great card, but its interaction with this new commander has basically spiked the price in it and caused it to all of a sudden have value. These old cards that never had any value because of new interactions, because of new cards that come out now have value. If you want to get really into it, uh, basically you get to reanimate uh, Hellcarver Demon uh, and you can make your opponent sacrifice all the permanents and, their, and discard their hands. In commander, obviously that's going to be a really great strategy for utilizing um, and destroying your opponent. So here's the point of this video. You have this interaction that happens and this is what I think. I think that Commander unites players and investors, collectors, speculators in this perfect way that every TCG needs to realize and utilize. Um, we've talked about this a lot about this on my channel that it's so important to have a player base and it's so important to have a collector and investor base and those two united together is what makes a healthy format or a healthy card game. That's what's so important in trading card games. If you're not going to do that, you might as well just have a board game. You might as well just have a, a like a legacy card game. You might as well just have like a living card game where you can buy all the cards up front and not call it a trading card game. Um, what this does, in my opinion, is that it builds excitement for new sets for both parties. When you have a format like Commander, uh, you are setting up your your company, you're setting up your business to have some excitement when a new set comes out from all parties involved. It's not just what is the meta game in the most competitive format. It's also like how do these cards interact with this deep, uh, you know, bottomless pit of card pools and things like that. And I get it. Magic is really unique. It's been around for 30 years. 
years. It's very unique for this thing, but I think that as new TCG companies come out, they need to be creating elements that go backwards in their, their repertoire of cards and, and affect things that uh, maybe didn't have a use in the past. Um, and it, it is the, the really cool thing about this is it creates a true supply and demand dichotomy. It, it really creates a true interest level. It's not just that like somebody specced on these cards and they drove the price up. It's that people figured out, the player base figured out this connection, uh, a player figured out this connection between these two cards. They, as soon as this card spoiled, they got online, they looked it up, they found this card that is um, really broken with it, and then they started buying those, and then the market caught on to it, and other people shared it, other people found out about it, and now all of a sudden you have a valuable card that didn't used to have value, and now it does. And so now people are going back in their collections, and they're looking for this demon card, and they're, um, you know, they're going to their LG Yes, and they're looking through the bulk bin. Uh, they're looking through the bulk binders. It creates an excitement and it creates a um, an attachment to this new set that I think is really special. I think it's really important. Um, and I think that when you look at Commander, oftentimes you look at just it in a vacuum of the gameplay. You look at it as just a, um, is Commander fun? Is it, it's a casual format? You know, sometimes you hear me complain that Commander, like they print specific to Commander cards. I don't, I still don't love that. Um, but what I do love is that it unites these two player, or these two groups that are interactive in the Magic the Gathering scene. It unites them in a way that causes this excitement to build about the formats and about the new sets. And that is what we need. That is what you need to do as a card game. You need to keep people interested, keep people excited. And that's the type of stuff that makes it really exciting to be both a player and to be both a collector. Now, if you uh, if you have been buying box opening, like I, you know, I, not box opening, sorry, buying like collections like I do, it's gonna be a lot of fun for me to go back through. I have like all the bulk rares and majestics uh, that are mythic, sorry. I have all the bulk rares and mythics that I've ever had collected um, just sitting in a box. And so like, it'd be fun to go through these and see if I can scout out any $20 cards now. And uh, it's just a lot of fun. It, it creates excitement for the format and for the community and i think that that's a really cool thing so these formats that dive in deep if you um if you play commander what are some of the uh, cards that you've seen spike as a result of other cards and uh this is not the first this tends to happen every set and i love that i love that anytime a new set comes out whenever i'm looking at magic i'm looking at the cards to say what is this card going to do with maybe some other cards in the repertoire or uh, particularly i look at my lands matter deck right and i say can this affect anything that i already have in the deck or that i took out of the deck previously to help this card Card. You know, it, it's just a lot of fun to uh, to engage in the hobby like that. So uh, I think Commander, this is one of the, the unspoken things about Commander that not a lot of people talk about. The way that new cards can affect old cards and the way that they trigger the market and the way that they trigger the player base uh, to, to create this excitement, I think is really beautiful and really cool. Uh, and one of the reasons that Commander is my favorite format, other than maybe Popper, but Popper does this too. When a new common is printed, oftentimes it backs up and it creates creates this um, you know, dichotomy that works really well in the popper, not the collecting, well maybe the foils for old foils, but it creates this excitement to look back at how these cards will interact with older cards. And I love that about those vintage legacy formats uh, that really uh, affect the, the card pool. So hope you have yourself a fantastic day. Just a little conversation about Commander today. Uh, really excited about the new set, gonna be really cool. Hope you have yourself a fantastic day. Remember to be kind to the people around you. We'll see you again next video.